Hi, I'm Erica Gilchrist, the unstoppable woman, speaker, author, and trainer, and welcome to WTF, Women Thriving Fearlessly, where we reveal the personal stories of successful people to inspire women to thrive. And with us today, we have a phenomenal woman who's thriving fearlessly, Ms. Molly Skemper of Fig Catering, and I'm really excited about this interview. You know, in my line of work, I can easily put in 80 hours in a single week. When I plan my girl time, that's really important to me. So when my girlfriends and I do get together, the last thing we're thinking about is who's going to cook. When I heard about FIG catering, and FIG, by the way, stands for for intimate gatherings, I was like, yes, we have got to get this woman on the show. and I packed up the equipment and we made it happen. Molly, thank you so much for joining us on the show today and You're taking welcome. time out of your really busy schedule. <laughs> I see the operation you got going on here and it is really busy. So thank you. You're welcome. For, Thanks for, for having me. A moment. All right. So talk to us a little bit about Fit Catering. What does Fit Catering do? So uh, Fit Catering, my husband and I started nine and a half years ago. We focus on smaller events. So FIG actually stands for Four Intimate Gatherings. So um, we go up to 150, which sounds a lot like a lot to some people who have home parties. They're like, oh, that's a really big party. But in the grand scheme of Chicago catering, that's pretty small. So, okay. um, and we do that so we can really focus on the food and we can make as much food on site as possible, which lots of caterers, obviously, if you're catering for 3,000 people at the Shedd Aquarium, you have to bring in most of that food fully cooked right. in order just to logistically get it done. So we wanted our focus to be a little more food-based, so we decided to do smaller parties. Okay. How long have you been doing this? Uh, nine and a half years. Nine and a half years. Yeah. I'm so, sure it's evolved over that Yeah. Time. So when we first started, you know, like any entrepreneur, it's like, great, I'm going to be in business for myself, mm -hmm. and I'll be my own boss, and... My husband and I did everything from cooking to cleaning to serving, um, and now we have 14 full-time employees and about 25 to 30 wait staff that work for us on and off. Very nice. Um, so we're obviously we're out of the kitchen a little more, mm -hmm. and we're bosses to a lot more people than just us, yeah. which is uh, very different for <laughs> me. <laughs> okay. And it's not like when I started the business, I didn't think, oh, I'm going to be a great boss for other people. I just thought I was going to be my own boss, and right. I thought that'd be great. And um, so... That's been... Now, do you uh, have just this location? This is our only location mm -hmm. currently. Um, we do represent a venue that's in Edgewater, so that's okay. out on the north side. Um, so we do some catering up there, but we also allow other caterers to come into that venue and, and okay. serve. So. so what is it about a small group that appeals to you more than the larger ones? Um, like I said, you're able to focus on the food a little more. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, we're very personal with our clients. We get to know our clients really well. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of them, the ones that we do home parties for, we do multiple home parties. Right. Um, so it's fun to, you know, be that personally involved and not just be a faceless, like, caterer in a right. tuxedo, which... Yeah. So I was in and out of the kitchen. Yeah, I was, I was in staffing before I started the company. And it was definitely like that where I felt like I was just like a penguin kind of tuxedo mm -hmm. waiter. And like right. no one ever really saw me, you know. So I think it's great to have my own company and be more personally involved. And my girlfriends and I, we get really busy. So we will have to <laughs> schedule girls night. And sometimes it's like eight weeks in advance. Yeah. So um, when you said you focus on like small groups from two, as small yeah. as two, <laughs> up to 150, I was like, hmm. That would be really great because yeah. we're always talking about what are you going to bring or what am I going to bring? Right. Like, we're too busy. We don't want to do that kind of yeah. stuff. So something like this would actually be perfect for us. Right. Now, is it just the food or do you do cocktails as well? We do food. We do cocktails. We do all the rentals. So if you wanted vintage place settings or a little different look, linens, if you just needed some stuff for your home, if you didn't want to break out your china, you know, wanted to do something a little more right. casual but wanted mm -hmm. it to look nice, we can handle all of that. So... We just started our cocktail program about a year and a half ago, but we're really going to start building that up and actually start a separate company called Fig Drinks 
that's just focused on cocktail catering. Oh, very nice. Oh. I like that. Fig drinks. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to take you up on that one because Erica likes just a little cocktail every now and then. So um, you, you've grown your business over nine and a half years, which is fantastic. Thank you. Um, on, on one end, it's wonderful. You're yeah. expanding. But on the other end, fill in the blank. <laughs> well, it's definitely challenging. I mean, it's great that I work with my husband because... We get to see each other. Right. And when we were first starting the business, we definitely were working 80 to 100 hour weeks. So if we hadn't been working together, we wouldn't have seen each, each other, other very often. <laughs> so at least if we were working, we're together. But also that's challenging because like our personal life is all of a sudden a business life. Yeah. Um, our personal fights are in front of our office meetings no. half the time. Okay. Because that's, this is where we fight. This is where we are most mm -hmm. of the time. Yeah. So um, so that's challenging, you know, and it does sometimes make uncomfortable situations for office people who are like, oh, yeah, these are my bosses, but they're also married. Okay. okay. So they're having these personal, you know, mm -hmm. and work fights at the same time that kind of mesh. So what industry were you in before you got into catering? Um, I got back into food service, but pre I, my degree is in marketing, so I was in advertising for four years. Oh, okay. Well, that came in handy. You have a business yeah. and a background in marketing. Yeah, it right? was definitely a good match. My husband has worked in kitchens his whole life, so it was definitely familiar with the food cost aspect and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff that I didn't really know about. Like, I right. had been in front of house, but I hadn't really done that kitchen food costing, all those kind of things that go into catering. Oh, my goodness. But I knew, like, the business side and, like, working with Excel, which he had never done before, you know. Okay, and so like, you complimented each other. Yeah. Excellent. So it's, it's worked good. out well. So um, let's say there's someone watching this and, and they want to get into the catering business. Uh -huh. What <laughs> advice <laughs> would you have for them? Um, I mean... We started off really small. Everyone starts off differently, though. I know some people who have invested tons of money mm -hmm. and started off and been successful. We decided just to take it kind of one step at a time. We only started the company with $2,000 and just did little home parties and then mm -hmm. eventually had our own kitchen space. Um, but, I mean, it's really just be willing to work hard, which I think is in any business that mm -hmm. you're going to start. Um, know that you're not going to make enough very much money probably your first four or five years i mean mm -hmm. we were breaking even i think for our first five years and now we're like yay we can pay ourselves right it's like, Jeez. <laughs> okay um right. rather than investing everything back into the business and i think you like that's what you just have to be willing to make sacrifices for your you know not take vacations and not yeah. you know not buy a bunch of new clothes and you know right. just be able to eat catering scraps and stuff <laughs> go out to dinner every night <laughs> right See, and I'm really glad you said that because there are a lot of people who want to go into business and when they do first of all they don't realize how much work it is yeah secondly when they do realize how much work it is and they're willing to do it anyway and they don't see a profit a lot of them will get discouraged yeah third um, if they don't see a profit and they decide, you know what, well, I still need a vacation. I still need right. clothes. I still need whatever, fill in yeah. the blank. And they're actually taking money out of the business. Right. And that's one of the reasons why the business fails. Yeah. You can't yeah. have a thriving business, you know, if you don't have money invested. No. In and it. that's what everyone was like, how much do you make? And we're like, all of our employees, when we first started hiring, like, full-time employees, they all made more money than us. Wow. You yeah. know, it was like, yeah, we have to pay them a living wage, and we're not right. making a living wage. So, right. like, they're going to make more money than us. So and you get paid stuff. less. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And exactly. that's anyone who's running any type of business, especially when you have a staff. Yeah. Um, and need to understand. I'm glad the, I'm glad you phrased it the way you did. Like, they make more money than we do. And yeah. that is unheard of for a lot of people. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad you're giving them the, <laughs> you're taking the curtain and pulling it yeah. back and going, no, this is exactly how the business how the business works. Yeah. And I think lots of people see those big businesses or they hear about Wall Street where the CEOs are making billions and the employees are making 10,000. When you have a small business, it's like the opposite. See? Okay. <laughs> Duly noted. You all hear small that. Business. Right? Okay. So, and, and small businesses are especially um, difficult because small business usually means you're struggling to even start up. Right. You know, CEOs usually have some type of capital or right. some type of financial backing. Um, but when you're starting your own small business, it's really difficult to find startup. Yeah. So, and it's, it's, you know, some people have investors and then they're tied to those investors. And that's right. a choice you make. You mm -hmm. know, if you do want a lot of capital to start up and have people investing, they're probably going to want to stay in your business or going to want dividends or something, right. you know, mm -hmm. something fairly quickly. And we chose to go the opposite way and just use our own money. But 
either way, there's pluses and minuses, you know. Now, are you happy with that decision? I am. Okay. I'm, I'm really happy. Okay. Um, I feel like, you know, now we're making money. Now we can take vacation. Very like, nice. We still work a lot, but less, you know, we have other people who can definitely, like, take over, like, when we're sick or whatever. It's not like the business is going. It's like, oh, yeah, we have people who can do this. Oh, very nice. Awesome. Yeah. So now, in your circle, in your personal circle, mm -hmm. um, were there any relationships that suffered as a result of you building your business? I mean, I think all of my friends who have regular nine to five jobs, mm -hmm. like I still see them, but definitely not as much. You know, I had a roommate who I lived with for six years mm -hmm. who were very close and I see her maybe five times a year versus mm -hmm. before it was every week. You know, even when we didn't live with each other, it was like, yeah, we're going to see each other every week. Okay. And but she works nine to five Monday through Friday and has weekends off. And I very rarely have weekends off. Yeah, weekends, I'm sure, are really busy. Yeah. Right? So finding time to get together with those kind of people. I mean, even last night, I, my friend was having a uh, fundraiser mm -hmm. and I donated some pies. But I was literally, like, brought them there and was like, okay, I got to leave now. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> like, here are your pies. Yeah, like, okay, I wish I could luck. stick around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But so. Did it suffer at all? And I know that, or did she understand, I guess is a better question. Yeah, I mean, I think my friends are understanding. They still invite me to stuff, which oh, good. is good. <laughs> I haven't been totally lost the circle, mm -hmm. but it's definitely like we're not as close. Okay. And I tend to be closer now with people who are either in the catering business or in the wine business or in okay. the food service business because mm -hmm. they have weird, crazy schedules like me. Yeah. And I'm able to, able to call them and be like, hey, I have, have this afternoon for you. You want to stop by? And it's like, sure. You know, yeah. I do too. Versus my other friends, yeah, like you were saying with your friends, like we like to we, we used to plan stuff more out, and now mm -hmm. it's like I can't do that. Like yeah. if I happen to have a Sunday off, that's great, I'll hang out with you, but like I can't plan it five weeks in advance yeah. because I want to take a job if I can get it on that exactly. Sunday. Exactly, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So who was your biggest influence? Um, I mean, I think everybody. My my dad has always been very entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. um, they owned a restaurant when I was young, and then he got out of it and back into like working for someone. But he's always had ideas mm -hmm. and been very. So he's been a big influence. Um, my grandma, who was like very independent, you know, at that time, mm -hmm. like went to college and like always worked for herself. Like very an influence. My uncle, who's really into farming him and my dad owned the restaurant when I was young and I always said they were 25 years ahead of their time because they owned a farm to table restaurant in western Michigan wow um back when Alice Waters was starting in California and I'm like if you had been in northern California you could be Alice Waters right instead oh my like people weren't ready for it then you yeah. know they were used to not paying much money and not getting mm -hmm. handmade food and not getting food that was grown right there oh so I was like, you were just ahead of your time. Now you could have been so successful. Well, they were successful in their own way. They um, were. Is, is there something that you know now that you wish you would have known <laughs> before you started Fig Catering? Um, I don't know, so many things. I mean, I think, I think that I was going to have to be a manager of other people. I wish I had prepared myself more for that in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And like maybe taking classes, management classes, mm -hmm. or talk to other people more about managing staff because it definitely was a huge learning curve for me. Okay. Like I had been used to managing people like servers in restaurants, but never like office staff and things like that. So okay. that was a huge like I was like, I'm so used to people like learning like I do, which is just right. by doing stuff. Mm -hmm. That you know, obviously when you manage people, you have to figure out how they learn, and everyone right. learns different. Mm -hmm. And be able to culture that you know, like encourage that, and not get. And it was hard, very hard for me. It's still hard for me. Okay, so a bit of a challenge. But again, life doesn't go in a straight line. No. And when you have people that work for you, their lives don't go in a straight line. Right. So sometimes you know, there's circumstances and conditions that surround their lives that somehow spill over right. um, into work and you have to learn how to be flexible yeah. with that. So Definitely flexibility is the name of the catering, catering in general. I tell my other co-caterers that were, you know, friends, colleagues, but like competition, I'm like, it's not really about serving food. It's just about figuring out how, how to make shit happen. Right. <laughs> I get it. Yes. Oh, I love that. Like, it's not really right. about serving food. It's just like, oh, we don't have a kitchen here. What do we do? Or like, right. we don't have enough plates. Like, how do we make this work? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So it's just like figuring out how to make it work. And they're like, yeah, that's what it is. You ever have a client that's um, a little challenging, let's say, oh, yeah. to work with? 
definitely lots of, usually beforehand more so than at the event. Sometimes we'll have people, but we've had, you know, we have clients who are just very used to things a certain way, you okay. know, like lots of people who hire, have catering a lot, you know, mm -hmm. or are used to things. So, and we just, actually, we just last week did an event for the vice president, that the vice president was attending. So from a security standpoint oh and goodness. all those kind of logistics, wow, it was very, you know, it was just like, oh yeah, all of our servers have to give their social security number and go through yep. secret service checks. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but congratulations. That's Thanks. huge. How did that go? It was, it was really great. It Excellent. was really great. And, uh, yeah, it was actually, we had catered before for the axle rods. So nice. they brought us in again. So it was, like I said, it was like a continuing relationship. Like they came back and were like, oh, I'm so glad you were able to come back. And we're like, are you kidding me? We're catering for the vice president. Right. Like, this is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> like, of like, course. Yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, I'm free. We yeah, can, yeah, we, yeah can, we, can, we can make that work. Yeah, they're like, thanks for doing this. With, it was very short notice. It was a fundraising event, but it was they had like a week and a half to plan it. Wow. So they they hired us only like a week and a half before, and we're like, yeah, I think we can fit the vice president in on Wednesday. Yeah, where's, where's the, let, right. me check, let me check our calendar. Yeah, and that says a lot about fit catering, because seriously, a week and a half is no time at all You're to right. plan something. Plan and if menu, it's a last and... minute thing and they call you, yeah. that says a lot about you. Congratulations. I'm really proud of Thank you personally you. Yeah. Uh, for that. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot, y'all. We're going to have Once, once the president. Obamas come back here, we're ready. I know. That's what, <laughs> I don't know if you're used to the Obamas, but, you know, you can come to the Gilchrist <laughs> residence also and treat us like royalty. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, all of our clients are like, they're like, oh, did you do anything special? I was like, it's the same food that we always do. We always do great food. We always mm -hmm. want to give top-notch service. And, you know, our servers don't stick around with us if, like, they aren't able to give vice presidential service to everyone, not Very just nice. the vice president. So. so speaking of your food, is there any type of food that you specialize in? So we focus on, first, we locally source our food. Mm -hmm. So we're getting foods from local farms, um, especially at this time. You know, we're just waning off of our season, but we'll still be getting winter vegetables. Um, and we really like rustic comfort foods, I say, with ethnic twists. Rustic comfort foods. With so we don't do twists. anything specific like Mexican, mm -hmm. or but lots of Latin and Asian flavors and okay. ingredients find their way into our food just because that's what we like. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing too floofy or fancy or okay. like things you don't recognize. Really, it's stuff that you recognize, whether, you know... Even if you've never had it because it's maybe Mexican, but it's like, oh, it's chicken and with a sauce and, oh, it's a mole sauce. I've never had that before, oh, but yes. it's something I recognize. It's familiar. So so if someone wants to support Fit Catering, how do they do that? Um, I mean, hire us. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, so What's we, your ideal type of environment, though? We do, um, I mean, we do so many different kinds of things. We do drop off breakfasts and lunches and, and dinners during the week for like office people who are having meetings, want to impress their clients, having lunch and learns, and they want to bring in some food that's a little different um, to, like, full-service parties during the week. During mm -hmm. the holidays, we'll do lots of holiday parties for people. And then weddings. We do about, um, this week, year, we did about 60 weddings. Busy. So, yeah, probably about the same next year, maybe a couple more. Oh, wow. Um, and, yeah, we try not to do only weddings. It's good to, like, mix it up um sure. when we first started i was scared of weddings because i thought like everyone was like bridezillas like yeah. on tv mm -hmm. but very few people are like bridezillas oh i'm glad to hear that because immediately when you said weddings i was like oh yeah no oh i mean like especially people who come to us i think because just of our nature like mm -hmm. we're more laid back right so the brides we get tend to be more laid back oh, so okay, good yeah you attract I, who you are yeah, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. yeah and i think if you're like a really high-end fussy caterer you're going to get those clients but you expect that and you charge for that I and heard. you know we don't get we don't Ooh. get those fussy clients very often so i'm just gonna repeat what you <laughs> said it's like we get the fuss, the fussy one but you know you charge for that yeah you charge for that charge charge it. charge yeah yeah I, I get it i totally get it so now <laughs> so i'm gonna shift a little bit i'm just mm -hmm. gonna talk about molly yeah so getting into an industry that you were kind of familiar with, but not 100%, Yeah. Um, were there any internal challenges that you experienced in building this business? I mean, uh, I, w I was prepared for the hours. Mm -hmm. um, I, knew, I knew that they would be, you know, they would be long. Um, 
I don't know. I, I mean, I still struggle with eating because mm -hmm. you're around food all the time. Okay. And I, you eat at weird schedules versus, which is not good for you, you know, everyone mm -hmm. let's like on a diet says you should like eat small meals and eat it on a schedule. And mm -hmm. it's like, you can't do that in catering. Like we have a, usually a big lunch, but then like dinner is like whenever and wherever yeah. and usually standing up and grabbing <laughs> it while you're at an event, which is right. not the healthy way to eat. Not right. Really, but mm -hmm. And then like. Of course, you want to try like everyone's cake, especially if they don't get it from you, because mm -hmm. you want to be able to recommend people or not recommend them. So you're like, oh, yeah, that's good. You know, mm -hmm. so you end up snacking a lot and, you know, eating at late at night. And yeah. I think just the, the restaurant industry and catering industry in general, like you end up going out and drinking and eating later at night because you're done with work at 11 or right. 12 or mm -hmm. 1 versus most people they're done at work at 5 or 6 and they go out and have a drink when you go out and have a drink it's 1 in the morning yeah you yeah know? a lot of stuff is closed right by then I, yeah I you it. gotta find, you yeah. gotta find the stuff that's open and mm -hmm. usually that stuff is not the healthy stuff right right exactly <laughs> it's usually something that's coming right out of grease right or yeah it was just pan fried in grease so or... that's still a struggle i mean mm -hmm. trying to find time to work out and eat not so bad Okay. <laughs> She's like, not so bad, right. you know, I'll eat, but eh, it could go either way. All right. So um, let's talk about someone um, that past or present that you perceive as a woman who thrives fearlessly. Who would that person be? Um, I mean, I immediately think of like Eleanor Roosevelt mm -hmm. because she was so influential, but like at a time when like women in that position weren't expected to be influential. Right. I think now the first ladies, like they definitely, like we kind of expect them to do a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, but I think at that time they weren't really, they were just like, oh yeah, you're, you're just supposed to be pretty and do, you know, support yeah. the president. Mm -hmm. And she definitely like went above and beyond and kind of made that first lady role, I think what it is, you know. And how did that influence you in your life? Um, I mean, I think every, every woman that I look at that just like is doing stuff, especially mm -hmm. like I said, like my grandma, like, especially when it's before your time and mm -hmm. it's like when you're not expected. And I, right. I think in food service, even though so many women cook at home, there are so few women in food service still, yeah. and especially in authority and owning businesses and owning restaurants and owning catering companies that I think, um, you know, I think. You know, even though it seems obvious because the women are the caretakers and yeah. the people who feed mm -hmm. feed their families, like right. it doesn't happen in the business world as often. So, And I'm glad you mentioned that because if I'm someone who's caring for my family, but for whatever reason, I wasn't taught how to cook. Yeah. Right? So is there anything that Fit Catering offers that would help me figure out <laughs> how to feed my family? We used to offer cooking classes and mm -hmm. it's part of our business that we actually stopped. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's one of those things we love doing. It just wasn't lucrative. Understood. Um, people always wanted to do it on the weekends, of mm -hmm. course, cause that's when they're available, but it was like, okay, we could have a 50 person party or we could cook for five, you know, we could right. do a mm -hmm. cooking class for five people and people just weren't willing to spend enough for that cooking class. There are some great cooking classes, Chopping Block in Chicago. Okay. Um, that they've got a big facility, so they're able to handle smaller groups, you know, coming in. And, yeah, that was my next question. So yeah. who, who does that kind yeah. of thing? So that's good. Bespoke Cuisine, mm -hmm. Chopping Block, uh, The Wooden Spoon, which is up in Andersonville. Okay, so if there's one thing that you would want our viewers to take away from this interview, what would that be? Um, I think just don't, be afraid. I mean, be afraid, you know, like mm -hmm. living fearlessly, like you're always going to have some fear because you're, wouldn't it be human if you didn't, mm -hmm. but just go for it, you know, just, yeah. just try stuff because you never know what's going to work. And like I said, like the cooking classes, there's been many areas of our business that have fallen off or not succeeded because right. they just weren't the right fit. And mm -hmm. we just learned from them and just kept chugging along learn from them and keep chugging <laughs> along. I love, I love your terms and phrases. It's just so real. It's just like, look, let me tell you exactly how this is going to go. Just keep yeah. doing it. Yeah. Keep going. Molly says to keep going. Um, Molly, thank you so much no for joining problem. us on Women Thriving Fearlessly. Thanks for coming down. Next time I'll have more sweets and treats for you. Oh, and then I'll, and then you'll be able to understand my whole struggle with, yeah, I think on Friday I ate five pastries and I was like, I, I have to stop going out to the kitchen. <laughs> See, you know what? And Molly, I'm going to help you because I like you. So if at any point you have five pastries sitting in front of eat. you, 
that you can or can't eat, um, go ahead and call me. I'll okay. be happy to help you okay. with that or, you know, some other type of food. I'll just post them on Facebook and invite people down here. And don't think we won't show up. <laughs> like, she's laughing, but we're so serious. Like, we'd we'll be like, oh, fa oh, oh, Molly has some. Hey, Z, <laughs> we're going to go down and get some pastries. And don't think we won't show up because we absolutely will. I'm not used to that office. See, we always have food around here, so it's so different than an office where... Yeah. Yeah, we bring food up to one of the venues we work at a lot, and lots of times there's leftovers, and they call people from the other offices, and they're like swarms of like bees, like, oh, yeah, yeah, food. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what it's like when you work in an office. When there's free food, it's <laughs> right. like people are there. Mm -hmm. and there's free food here. We're like, no, stop feeding us. <laughs> it's like enough <laughs> with the food. I'm kind of over it. And you're absolutely right. People yeah. swarm yeah. in the office. They're just like, oh, I don't have to buy lunch today. And that yeah. is not a problem. <laughs> I will go I'll home. take some for later. Oh, yeah, exactly. exactly. I don't have to cook. I get to feed my family. Molly, you are terrific. You are absolutely <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thanks for coming down. And, and yeah. your personality, I, I'm a pretty good reader <laughs> of personalities, and I have a feeling that anyone who hires you is just going to connect with you. No wonder the vice president of well, the United States said, bring Molly down Bring here. Molly down here. That is awesome. <laughs> Molly, thank you so much, and I definitely see you as a woman who's thriving fearlessly. Thank you so much for being on the show. No problem. And we're thank gonna you. we're going to say bye to our viewers. Bye-bye. <laughs> So there are a few things that stuck out to me about this interview, and one of them you could probably guess. And that is when she said, you have to be flexible, you just gotta make stuff happen, right? So if you're someone who's considering starting your own business or organization, if there's something that you need that you don't currently have, figure it out. You gotta make a way to make that happen. The second thing that stuck out was, five years into business, they didn't turn a profit. But nine and a half years into the business, they have the vice president calling on them to cater their events. That is a huge difference. That is a woman who's thriving fearlessly. So for you, I'm telling you, whatever it is that you want to start, even if you don't have all of the components, even if you don't know everything, just start. Understand that you have to reinvest in the business over and over again, and eventually, the money's gonna come, the clients are gonna come, and the satisfaction is going to come. That is a woman who's thriving fearlessly.